Hey, what's going on? It's Just Add Misplay. I have another deck tech for you guys today. I'm going to talk about the first deck I've ever built for EDH. It's Kami of the Crescent Moon. I picked him as a commander because I wanted to make a mill deck. This is a different type of mill deck. This mill deck wants all players to draw cards, which essentially is kind of like a pseudo mill. Because once they run out of cards to draw, they lose. Kami of the Crescent Moon, it costs two islands, two blue clips, and it has at the beginning of each player's draw step, that player draws an additional card, which is essentially the turn two Howling Mine every turn. He's a 1-3, so he's got a little bit of a booty. Or maybe a lot of bit of a booty. Dang. Anyway, so he can block early on, like he can block weak creatures and you know protect you from a little bit of damage also your opponents aren't going to kill kami they want to draw that extra card that helps them and don't you just want to help the other players right wrong that's where the deck comes in before we start off i just want to say i play mind's dilation in this deck it's a lot of fun it's easy to get the seven mana the way i built this deck for a more competitive card to replace this with i'm just going to say right off the bat mesmeric orb is the card to get mesmeric orb is an artifact that says whenever a permanent becomes untapped that permanent's controller mills one card so it's really good it's very good in this deck i'm more of a casual player and i like to play games that do that have fun like to me that's what edh is all about i'll cut this and put mesmeric orb in other than that, I, I play this for fun, and a lot of people in my play group play for fun as well, so this card gets played a lot, and it does, there's a lot of like, oh snap moments, I know you, I know you like those oh snap moments. Now let's get started with the creatures. We got Hadron Crab, really good landfall, turn one drop, and it's it's just on that curve. You have this in your hand, you're good to go. It's already doing stuff by turn two. And turn two, you're always going to play your general. So there's not a whole lot of turn two spells in this deck other than like counter spells later on. We'll talk about that. So Hejon Crab is definitely a staple. You know what? The new crab from Zendikar should be in here. I haven't updated it since then. Since Zendikar, I have not updated it. So I should probably get on that. We got Chase's Archivist. He pretty much makes everyone chuck their hand and draw new hands, which is really good for like a pseudo mill strategy. Snapcaster Mage, you know what he does, and he does it well. We have Spark Double. This card's incredible. I think it should go in every blue deck. It's so good. Copy your General. Copy your Planeswalker. You just copy stuff, and it gets an additional counter. So in a way, it's better than the original, right? Moving on. We have Manic Scribe for a two drop. Everyone mills three and then Delirium. I think they mill three more at the beginning of their upkeep. Really good. Drowner Initiative. It has one blue and every time any player plays a blue spell, you may pay one. If you do, target player puts the top two cards of the library into the graver. Now, this is a card that when I first bought this deck back in 2008, and I've kept it ever since because you know, it's foil, it looks cool. I really like what it does. Every once in a while, you'll have a few floating mana just waiting around, and you can just get a little bit of extra mill in every once in a while. So it's really good. I mean, it's not fantastic, but it'll do. It'll do. Up next, we have Memory Erosion. Whenever your opponent casts a spell, they mill too. Then we have Teferi's Tutelage, Omniscience, because, I mean, it has Jace, which is kind of like the ongoing theme for this deck. And if you've ever seen Omniscience <laughs> get played, or Omniscience, however you want to call it, it's Omniscience to me, people. It's really good. Just play it and win. Sphinx's Tutelage, Jace's Erasure. These are all like play a card or your opponent plays a card or you draw a card and your opponent mills. The enchantments, uh, Psychic Erosion, Patient Rebuilding. It helps get you more cards, although you don't always need it. 
Drowned Secrets. Whenever you play a blue spell, mill two. Target player mills two. Really good card. Okay. Up next, we got Dictate a Crew Fix. This is something you want to flash in to have your opponents draw even more cards. It's like a second general. Forced Fruition. Now, if you haven't played with this card yet and you're running mill, you need to play with this card. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, they draw seven cards. It's crazy. They'll just cast like two, two or three spells and they think they're like, oh, I'll have all these cards. It'll be great. Wrong. It's not going to be great for them. They're going to have to discard those cards. They're going to hate it because if they find like a few cards in their hand where they can combo or do whatever, they're going to keep drawing cards. This card's really good. It's busted. Play it. Ristic Study. You know why. Thought Scour is good. Mill 2 draw a card. So I like that it replaces itself. Wheel and Deal is really good. Actually, fun fact, I think I bought this back in 2008, back when it was like, it had to be 25 cents or something like that. I think it's shooting up to like $10 right now. I'm not even sure, but I bought, I think I bought four at the time and I haven't looked at the prices lately, but I know it's more than 25 cents. So we got Archive Trap from Zendikar, really good. Brain Freeze, also really good. Psychic Spiral is pretty sweet. Increasing Confusion, you can just pay it for zero and then double it with the flashback. I like it. Ancestral Vision is sweet. Ancestral Recall. Vision Schemes is good. And Telemann Performance is pretty cool. It kind of mills their deck and you get a creature for five. It's not that bad. It's also not that great. But it can. there's times like this deck only has like six creatures and there's other decks out there that are like that so it can really mill if you target the right player it can really mill pretty good moving into the artifacts we have a mana crypt and soul ring of course and then this right here temple bell is one of my personal favorite cards i kind of put it in every deck because like i said my edh group is all casual and I like to play this thing and have everyone draw a card. It, it gets the game going. Like, if you ever played a game of EDH where it's dragging on and it's been like an hour and a half and everyone's just starting to lose interest, start playing Temple Bell on turn three and tap it and give everyone a card. It really speeds up the game and everyone appreciates it. My, at least my play group does. Like, they don't typically swing at me because I'm the Temple Bell guy. So... Font of Mythos. It's like having two commanders on the field. It's really good. This is a Howling Mine, which is essentially your commander. Sapphire Medallion. Blue spells cost one less. Really good. Meek Stone. Busted. Play this card if you can afford it. Sands of Delirium. This is a card I got back when M13 dropped. And it was like my one of my first foil rares I've ever pulled. And this might be the card that kind of inspired this mill deck. I think I pulled a foiled rare and I got excited and I, I read what it did and I was like, all right, I'm going to make a commander deck with that. And here we are still in the deck to this day. Keening stone, same thing. This is a new guy. Folio of fancies, no max hand size. And then you can make people draw cards equal to the cards they have. It's pretty good. Tormat's crypt to exile all cards from graveyards. This is really good because Ulamog, the Geyer. If you mill someone else's deck and they mill Ulamog, you might as well just scoot because there's no way you're going to be able to beat them unless you have a Tormod's Crypt out. Also, if, you're, if your opponents are playing Ulamog, like, why are you even bother playing with them? <laughs> to be honest with you. At least in my play group, we have like adults and like parents that it's kind of hard to find time to get together. So, if everyone's taking their time to get together and have this, you know, this night of fun and, and board games and whatever, if you just have someone bring a deck like Eldrazi's, it's like we all got together so that you can play Eldrazi? Like, that's what we're doing? Anyway, rant over. Moving on, we got Isochron Scepter. Really good. Combos with a lot of cards in the deck. And then we have a Ghoul Caller's Bell for the last artifact. For now, there might be other ones sneaking in here. We'll see. This deck in a multiplayer format, sometimes 
gets targeted a lot because I don't have a lot of creatures to block, but I have a lot of spells to defend myself. So we're going to move into the spells to protect your planeswalkers and protect your life total, of course. Evacuation is incredible. Play it. Cyclonic Rift. Yes, that's a foily. A foily from uh, Return to Ravnica. I actually traded... I pulled two of these back in M13, or when Magic 13 came out, which was right around Return to Ravnica times. And I traded my Jace Memory Adept for a foil Cyclonic Rift. And at the time, this was only going for like, you know, $5 foil or whatever. And I think the, the kid was actually, actually was trying to swindle me because Planeswalkers always hold their values at least they did at the time so anyway long story short look who's laughing now sucker moving on repulse it's an unsummon and you get the it replaces itself which is what i really like boomerang's incredible you can bounce their land or bounce whatever creatures attacking you either eyes really good either sprouts even gooder gooder time stop really good end the turn go again Cryptic Command. This card's pretty sweet. It's got a lot of stuff you can do on there. A lot of options, which is why it's such a good card. Three pips is tough. Oh, wait. No, it's not. We're mono blue. Dream Fracture's really good. Counter, and then everyone draws a card. So in a way, it kind of mills them. Broken Ambitions. It's not fantastic. The Clash doesn't always work, but it's it's just another counter spell, to be honest. This might be better if it was like... What is it? Spell Swindle? The one that exiles it if you counter it. But there's just some of these are just personal cards. Like this is in from the original deck I built. This was in there, so I just kind of kept it. Trick Bind. This card's amazing. Okay. Split second. Counter an activated or triggered ability. Right? It's so good. Tails end. This is a new card from M20. Just read that. Counter an activated ability, triggered ability, or legendary spell. Two mana counter target commander. That's what that says. Get them. Pick them up. They're good. Arcane Denial. You know what it does. Narset's Reversal. This is really good. Moving in, we also got Twin Cast. These are very similar, except you bounce the spell and then you get to copy it, whereas this one you just copy it. So anyway, these are really good cards. You should play them if you have them. Oh yeah, so that was all like the, the bouncy spells and stuff. So now we're going to move into the counter spells. You want to save these counter spells for the right time, okay? Set up your board a little bit and then just hold on to these. Of course, I'm saying I only play cards that are fun. And then here we go with the whole stack of counter spells, right? I guess that makes me a little bit of a hypocrite. It is what it is. Counter spell for two. Force of negation. Fluster Storm, Force of Will, Mana Drain, Exclude, moving on to the weaker counter spells. I pull the Foil Negate, so I, ran, I run it. <laughs> Dismiss, which is really cool, and then I pull the Foil Essence Scatter back in the day, so I run that as well. Up next, we have our four Planeswalkers, starting off with Jace Bellerin himself. Each player draws a card. It's your commander in a Planeswalker form. Jace Memory Adept, pay zero. Target player mills 10. It's really good. Play it. And then we have War of the Spark Jace, which he might be getting cut. I'm not sure, but let's just, just look at that and just appreciate how pretty that is, right? He has a target player mills too, and then you get to draw a card. So he's, I mean, he's not great competitive wise, but... Look at this. You would run them too. If you own this, you would run it. Come on. Come on. Stop. We know you would. And we got a Tamiyo, which is incredible for this deck. You get the emblem off, which I've done multiple times. You essentially win the game. It's really good. That's the whole deck. We got 30 lands total. Two of those 30 is a Reliquary Tower. And the other one is Nikthos Shrine to Nyx. Every other card is just islands. All the islands for days. Okay? So 30 total, or 28 plus 2. And our commander one more time. Real quick, the strategy for this deck is to just... 
honestly, turn two, play out Kami, and just get everyone to draw cards. That's all you want to do is draw cards and then mill people from time to time. And if you're going to start milling, you want to target one player and specifically get that one player to keep on milling. Now, I know I should be putting the other crab in this deck. I haven't done it yet. I thought I did before I started recording this video, but oh well, that's going to go in the deck. What card should I take out? For that card like what do you think should it be mind's dilation because it costs seven what do you guys think leave a comment below and let me know what do you think of this deck it's my own version of mill i've seen a lot of mill before that are demir colors and stuff i don't think i've really played against another kami deck and i know every time that i play kami or i've played kami throughout the years i mean other than 2020 am i right I've always played Kami, like drop the Kami and they're like, what does that do? I say, it's a Howling Mine and they go, okay. And then we just keep playing the game. Everyone's like doing stuff and they're so happy they got all these cards. And before you know it, they only got 30 cards in their deck. You know, you got like 10 islands ready to go and you can just counter whatever dumb stuff they're going to play. Save your mana. This is a deck for the long game. The games are a little bit dragged out. But it, it, they're also sped up because everyone's drawing cards. There's a lot of interaction going on. While they're trying to do their stuff and take their turns, they don't realize before they know it, they're like secretly getting milled. If you get the chance to play this deck, go ahead and do it. It's really cool. And I've never really seen anyone else run Kami as their general. So maybe, maybe I'm starting something here. Who knows? If you like it or if you have any thoughts, please comment below. I will be checking them constantly so that's it see you next time bye hey thanks for watching if you like my content go ahead and subscribe to my channel don't forget to hit the notification bell also if you could hit the thumbs up it really goes a long way and it helps out a lot you can find me on twitch at just add misplay thanks again for your support and we'll see you in the next video